Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Edge 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back, this is Home Stretch. Stu, uh, IBM Edge, day two, our fifth year at IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. I, um, Trying to sort of digest, Stu, where we're at here and try to cut through what is um, obviously a great event in terms of the speakers that come in, the senior people at IBM, the, the, the face that they put forth to this community, how they've evolved this from a storage show into a broader system show, but cutting down into it. You know, we are seeing now the transformation of the enterprise tech business uh, and, a, and, and within that backdrop, transformation of IBM. IBM shedding low margin businesses, going hard after cognitive analytics, we all know that story. So what's left in the systems division, it's really three pieces. The Z, the power, which is, there's a one and the one A. Power, which is Unix, you know, declining business, okay, but still good business, I'm sure it throws off a lot of cash. And then the open power. Growth, exciting, new, probably not very profitable today, but it has long term potential and it supports some of the other businesses that IBM is you know, putting forth, like analytics and cognitive, and then of course the storage business, which is in transformation into a software-defined business and into a flash business. So, some holes, right, since the x86 is, has been sold to Lenovo, and one of those big holes is hyper-converged. IBM said, look, we're doing converged with Cisco. Um, we heard that Potentially they're leapfrogging, you know, skating to where the puck is. We'll see, maybe, I don't know. Um, hard to do without an x86 business. So they've got a partner for x86. Uh, it's still strategic for a lot of their clients, um, but it's like you got three pillars and then there's this sort of other one that's a big chunk of the market that IBM said, okay, we're not going to focus on that because we're going to clean up our portfolio, focus on profitability, not volume, uh, but it's a whole. Yeah, Dave, absolutely. So it's always interesting to sit back and look kind of longitudinally as to where, where we've come. Um, something I think IBM's done a good job uh, for a number of years is storage, isn't necessarily about the storing of data. It's about data and all of the services and everything that can go with it. Uh, so you know, we, we've talked about it a number of times this week uh, about you know things like cognitive, uh, IoT, uh, all the analytics are hugely important and will be drivers of the data business, which requires storage. Um, but you know, it's while, while there's the hardcore people that you know want to get into kind of the wonky uh, you know infrastructure of storage, uh, it's kind of that, that, that substrate that IBM builds on, uh, and IBM does a good job of, of moving up the stack. Uh, we've seen, you know, really maturation of power, um, which I think is part of IBM's answer as to, well, that hole on the x86 side, well, power, you know, it has performance, it has, you know, many use cases. We talked about from, you know, bare metal virtualization and containers, all that power can do. Um, and then there's the cloud piece. This hasn't been, you know, a raw, raw cloud show, but, you know, the obvious message from IBM is hybrid cloud, uh, you know, soft layer and blue mix, uh, and you can do power in the cloud, you can do Z in the cloud. Um, and when it comes to converged uh, and hyper-converged, well, some of that is, you know, well, if, if you want kind of the, the, the hyperscale architectures, well, we, we've got, got a cloud and we've got partners that are doing things like open power. Um, but, you know, converged versus stack, uh, great partnership with Cisco, they've been working pretty well. Um, they're not yet being transparent on numbers. Uh, what I did hear is they've sold more versus stack in the first half of this year uh, than they sold in all of 2015. So that's great, but it's not a billion dollar business. You know, VCE by comparison, last year did in the you know, order magnitude of three billion dollars worth of the V block and the VX block, which, you know, a lot of Cisco gear there. So Cisco, you know, strong leader in the converge. The thesis I've had is that Dell has really positioned itself to ride that next wave of, of hyperconverge. Not only do they have uh, you know, the Dell server-based uh, solutions, uh, which now with EMC means they've got like the VX rail, um, but you know, they own VMware, which has vSAN, and it's going to drive a lot of those solutions, and they have Nutanix as an OEM, so if you line up all of the players today, uh, which is now, you know, 
billion and a half, two billion dollars worth in 2015, according to Wikibon's number, including all the software and the hardware. Dell's well positioned there, and IBM isn't on the map when it comes to hyperconverged today. Versus tax, sure, they can push that down, they can do a lot of the same things in soft layer, but it is, as you said, a gap in the portfolio today. Uh, but IBM's got lots of things, as you said uh, many times here, IBM is you know, chasing the value, not the volume. Uh, and I heard a lot of good things, but yeah, I was a little disappointed on Hyperconverge uh, that uh, there, there isn't really an answer or really, really a strong acknowledgement as to you know, why they're not pushing in that way, despite the fact they've, they've got some really interesting solutions here. Uh, you know, the one that got closest to talking about Hyperconverge is when we talked to Bernie Spang uh, about some of the HPC solutions uh, that are building scalable architectures, not just on software-defined storage, but on software-defined def uh, compute. Uh, which is kind of a new one to me. Well, there's no story there on hyperconversion. One wonders, okay, is it because IBM believes there's not a big market there? And it could, could be, maybe they're right. You know, maybe the server sand guys are going to leapfrog them. Um, what you didn't hear, you know, you try to decode the statements. What you didn't hear is, hey, stay tuned, or you know, we got our best people working on that. I mean, those are sort of pat lines that executives yeah, typically yeah. give. Well, they almost just sort of, I don't want to say dismissed it, but they said, look, we got converged. That's, that's who we're betting on, and we're doing that with partnerships. And so, who knows, Stu, maybe, maybe we're overstating hyper-converged, right, so? Well, if, if you, you go, you know, not, not talk to the Cisco people in the booth here at the IBM show, but you go talk to Cisco about hyper-converged, and yeah, they'll be like, hyperflex, yeah, hyperflex, we, sure, we've got right. that, everybody's a going. Everybody's pivoting that way, so a lot of people are wrong, if, including us, if, <laughs> if, if that's what's going on, and I'm not sure it is. Now, again, I'm just trying to decode uh, you know, IBM's lack of a, a story there. Uh, on the positive side, I mean, IBM's generally really good at strategy, uh, and it's because they got a good combination of, of financial wizards, and they've got deep technical expertise, like core, core research. So, I, uh, Ginny Rometty set a strategy in place you know, four or five years ago. Uh, well, I see. To me, it started with SoftLayer. You know, that was the admission that, boy, we got to do something in cloud. They went all in on, on, on cloud. They made, they're still making tons of acquisitions there. They got a super senior guy in, in LeBlanc. A lot of people question LeBlanc's you know, appointment to cloud, but what they've done, interestingly, they brought in, bought in a lot of companies and put a number of people uh, in charge of you know, various positions within the cloud division. Um, and also big bets on analytics, big bets on, on Watson. So that, that strategy I think is starting to shape up very nicely. Cleaned up the portfolio, I say cleaned it up, they've rationalized it in systems. And what they're doing a better job of, particularly in storage, is getting products from R&D into the marketplace. That was a big criticism that I used to have of IBM. They'd be doing stuff in R&D, never hit the marketplace. Took them way too long, for example, to integrate store-wise. So some of the stuff they were doing in M&A, it just wasn't getting prioritized. It, IBM was moving too slowly. I think they're moving quicker, and that's good. Um, they've, they've definitely, with the rationalized portfolio, can go harder. Software Defined, I think, helps that. Ed Walsh, you know, he moves fast. He's a startup guy. Uh, so good, good choice there as the leader. Z Cycles, I mean, Z13 last January was a big announcement. That's you know kicked in. It was a good Q4, you know, for IBM Z, no doubt. Um, it's a very cyclical business. Uh, they're modernizing that platform. I mean, they're doing everything you, you have to do. And you know, there's always all kinds of rumors about oh, IBM's going to sell its mainframe business. We heard rumors about IBM's going to sell its storage business. I don't see either of those things happening. Ed Walsh on the Cube said no. I was not brought in to sell the storage business. Um, and it just to me, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, you need a place to store all this data and it's a good business, it continues to be. And the power strategy we heard from Doug Baylog, again, coming into focus, it was, at the time there were a lot of skeptics, what are they really trying to do? Is this a Hail Mary, will it work? It seems like there's a viable market for x86 alternatives. Yeah, and, and Dave, the thing that really impressed me at the show this year uh, is the transition of just talking about the infrastructure and really it's not just Software saying, oh yeah, software is great, but 
I can buy that software standalone. I can use it on a lot of different platforms. I'm really agnostic and focus on software and I focus on the, the, the transformation that people need to make. Uh, the keynote this morning, uh, Stephanie, who we interviewed yesterday, uh, talked about really the power of the individual. Uh, they had those MIT innovator, uh, you know, award winners uh, on there, and you know, our, our one of our last interviews, even talking about, you know, people that are, you know, been coding COBOL for 30 or 40 years, how they need to make change. So it's 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 a nice admission of IBM that you know, change is hard. Um, they've got a lot of ways that they're trying to help, uh, not only put products and uh, you know, solutions together, uh, but help bring the IT practitioners uh, and the whole industry along uh, to take advantage of those change. Uh, and as you said, Dave, on its core, uh, IBM's one of the last companies that really does hardcore R&D. Uh, it's great when we get access to, you know, talking about the IBM Fellows. I mean, IBM Fellow is not something that, you know, you get a little certificate. It's, you know, somebody that's done real research and a lot of work and, you know, the brain power here, um, I, I loved. I think the, uh, was it Donna Dillenberger that said, you know, it's when you get to take some of your, you know, the brains and, you know, rub them up against lots of other brains and IBM, um, you know, believes not only just having good people inside the company, uh, but working with the ecosystem, working, you know, majorly with open source, uh, that there's lots of opportunity for that open innovation. So it's it's impressive to see even it's, you know, the futurists of IT infrastructure is on our set. Um, so, you know, not just giving lip service to future and change, um, but, you know, we've seen it over the last few years, Dave, you know, it feels like they're, they're making good progress. Well, open source is a big deal for IBM and they've got credibility here. It's not just like a Johnny come lately into open source. I mean, if, if it weren't for IBM, I don't think Linux would have gotten to where it, where, where it did as fast as it did. Um, and IBM's doing, you know, they've taken, they've taken so many play, you know, uh, 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 replicating that playbook in so many places. You know, Spark is a really good example. Now blockchain, I mean, we're here, we heard so much about blockchain uh, this week. IBM going after it with the, you know, the, the Hyperledger open source project and so, that's a big deal. Taking you know, the Bitcoin blockchain concept and applying it in new places, improving on it, you know, that's huge in, in my view. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure the fit with the systems business. That was a little bit unclear to me. I mean, it's in the cloud and, and it'll drive infrastructure requirements, um, but still, it's IBM. His IBM, when Gerstner under when IBM under Gerstner made the decision to go services, um, it obviously was very successful. It made a hugely successful acquisition of PwC, and despite the fact that IBM continued to spend on R and D, it's very hard to lead both in services and in product, right? And and what happened was it, it became a services led company, and it's shifting now. And it's shifting into a company that's leading, well, it leads with business outcomes, okay, that's, that's good, that's good sales and that's good marketing, but it's also creating you know, new markets in the enterprise around cognitive, it's bringing together its analytics portfolio, it's driving a cloud strategy. So it's taking a lot of those services disciplines by industry and leveraging that expertise to drive software and services through the cloud uh, and that's really the play. And so the challenge that this division has is, you know, the financial folks at IBM want to recognize the, the revenue growth in cloud and cognitive and analytics and all those strategic areas that Ginny's been talking about for, for years. You know, they're not trying to prop up, you know, the mainframe business. It's like, okay, Tom, Rose, Amelia, here it is, Ross Mori, go. You know, you, you, you've got the legacy of IBM behind you, you know, sink or swim, and they're swimming. Right, it's just, it's not the growth business that, uh, that is Watson, that is analytics. And IBM's got to show growth to the street on those areas. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's funny, Dave, when you think about, you know, all the great things uh, IBM's done with open source, well, you know, we, we've said maybe that, you know, the billion dollar investment in like Linux back in the day, that drove a lot of services business. Yeah. And open source did drive a lot of services business. Um, but as we've seen with the pressure of Amazon, mar marginal economics of what's happening in cloud, 
I need to be a software business more than a services business. Um, so, you know, will IBM be able to, you know, grow, keep margins, and, you know, do they need to shrink as a business overall um, from a headcount standpoint? Because IBM is a giant, uh, you know, out there. Well, you know, this is the, we talked about this earlier. I mean, I've been saying for years, HP, HP now HPE, had to shrink to grow. That clearly is happening. Dell went in the opposite direction. I mean, I, I don't think so with IBM. I mean, it's been struggling to grow the top line, uh, and it's divested its x86 business, it divested its microelectronics business. Okay, but it, it's not saying, okay, we have to dramatically shrink in order to grow. I don't think that's IBM's strategy. I think IBM's saying we have to solve some of the world's biggest problems in order to grow, and, and that's good. I think it's going to work. Um, and a much, much more partner-friendly, innovative, innovating in partnerships is I think a big deal, leveraging that ecosystem. So I think we're at wrap, Stu. Uh, it was great again working with you. We got a lot going on this fall. So this is, we have three shows this week. So we're, we're live here, we're live out at Oracle Open World with John Furrier and Peter Burris and Jeff Frick and Greg Stewart and that team out there. Um, we've got a show, IBM's Chief Data Officer Conference in Boston on Friday. We're going to be broadcasting live from the Copley uh, Plaza Hotel in Boston. Uh, Bob Picciano is going to be the keynote speaker. It's, it's a conference that's going on Thursday afternoon and Friday. We're going to be there all Friday through 2 o'clock, start at, I think, 10 a.m., going through 2 p.m. Bob Picciano will be coming on. He's our first guest. Always a, a highlight of, of the Cube when Bob comes on. Talking about chief data officers, talking about compliance and governance in big data, why that's important, how that's finally you know, coming to the enterprise. Big discussion within health, healthcare, financial services, and obviously public sector, and perhaps bleeding into other areas. You guys talked about that at, at MIT. Uh, Seth, Patrick, Alex, good stuff. Thank you, Bert Lattimore, watching on the, on the stream. Kristen Nicole and your team, always really appreciate it. All right, Stu, oh, I, next IBM week. Go and, uh, uh, oh yeah, so ibmgo.com is going to have all the videos, all the, so we, we go into post-show mode after Edge ends. Jason Johnson, by the way, props to him, who's been sort of manning the, the IBM Go action um, along with you know, a num number of folks on the IBM team. All the videos from, from the main tent, uh, from the cube, uh, the, the, the technical sessions are going to be up and available on ibmgo.com, so obviously check that out. Next week we are is Big Data Week, Big Data NYC. We go concurrent with Strata. Uh, we are at 37 Signals in New York City. Colors. Uh, sorry, 37 Signals. 37 Signals is a great company, makes, makes base camp, but <laughs> we, we're a customer. We will be at 37 Pillars on 37th Street. Uh, it's a, for John Furrier, it's a seven iron from, uh, from Javits. So we'll be there in force. We have uh, all day cube on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We got a party that we're doing with NVIDIA on Monday night at 37 uh, Pillars. We have a party on Tuesday night that we're doing with IBM at the Mercantile Exchange, just around the corner. So big day to week. Stop by and see us at 37 Pillars. Uh, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching everybody. This is theCUBE, we're out.